Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will see Azure Cache for Redis. See, Azure Cache for Redis is used to store frequently accessed data. We will see how to create transactions, manage memory and use the cache site pattern. So, in this video and the coming videos, we will group multiple operations into a transaction. We will set an expiration time on the data. We will manage out of memory conditions and we will use the cache site pattern. And we will use the server stack package also. All right. So let's start this. So first of all, let me give you an introduction. Let me pull up my notepad. Okay. Let me give you an introduction. Okay. So imagine that you are building an instant messaging mobile application. Okay. So we are building a messaging mobile app. And this application would enable users to send messages to all members of a specific user defined groups. Send messages to all user on the basis of user defined groups. Okay. There's some data that needs to be stored about each user, like their username, email, and password. So we will store username, email and password so we decide that to use sql server to create a relational database for that information however the messages themselves needs to be sent and accessed quickly and a relational database is too slow for that so we decide to create an azure cache for redis because of the number of benefit it provides recall that uh, term application to optimize the web application by caching there is a read only data with redis module that are redis cache because it is an in memory data structure stored that can be used as a database cache or message broker so with your cache for redis we could use transactions to ensure a message with a picture and text are sent together we use data expiration to reset the name of the group and finally, use eviction policies to make sure the oldest messages are being deleted first when we are running low on memory. So let me give you a brief overview of the transactions in Azure Cache for Redis. So All right, so there are times when you must guarantee that multiple operations execute together. For example, in this example, in this instant messaging application, users would send an individual picture an individual text message or a picture and a text message together. When the user chooses to send a picture and text message together, we must ensure that other members of the group receives them at the same time. This is important because if a picture and text message are not received together, it's possible that a separate message could be sent in between the picture and the text message that could make the overall conversation confusing. So transaction and Redis work by queuing multiple commands to be executed as a group. When a transaction is executed, <clears throat> so transaction in Redis work by queuing multiple commands to be executed as a group. When a transaction is executed, the commands queued inside of it are guaranteed to execute without any other commands from other clients intervened between them. Okay, I've enabled the sandbox environment and I will start by creating the sandbox environment, uh, the Azure Cache for Redish instance. And to do that, I will use several parameters. I will use AZ 
I've read this create command and I will create the new Azure cache for Redis. The common parameters that I will use would be name, resource group, location, VM size, SKU. And the free sandbox allows us to create resources in a subset of the Azure global regions. So I will have to select a region, either East US, West US, to South Central US, Southeast Asia, Japan East, Brazil South. So I'll probably go with East US. Right. So let me quickly launch Azure Cloud Shell. And I will do this. So I would give the default default name for test Redis cache would be test Azure Redis. Right. So I will pass this command first. Right. And after that, I will paste this. Easy Redis create. Right. And I have taken up the resource group name that sandbox environment gave me right I will hit enter it will take some time and we'll do it after that I will create a dotnet core console application which will be used to insert the data values into the Azure cache for Redis so let it run and then I will use a few basic commands to create a new .NET Core application using the Cloud Shell. Let me pause the video and come back. Okay, it is done. Right, so I will do this and I will do .NET new console name Redis data. I'm sorry. This is not townet, it is dotnet. All right. Getting ready. Restore succeeded. And now I will do CD Redis data. I'm inside the new directory created for my app. I will now build and run the application, right? I will do .NET run. It will now build and run the application that I just, hello world. So this is the basic output of the .NET Core application that I created for this demo video. Now I will add the service stack.redis new git package. Now that we have the console application, we need to add the service stack.redis new git package. This will enable us to connect to the Azure cache for Redis and issue commands in C sharp, right? So I will do .NET add package service stack dot Redis okay it will build and run the application again to make sure it all compiled it should still output hello world right so now I will to connect to the Azure cache for Redis we need a connection string that contains the password and the URL service stack dot Redis has its own connection string we can retrieve the password with the Azure portal or with the command line. So if I open up a duplicate tab, this is the resource group, deployment, Why is it not showing? Okay, here it is. Test as a Redis. Why do you see here the access keys? Primary connection string, secondary connection string, right? Now, we'll have to run the command to put the connection string together and display it on the command line. 
we have to make sure that the host name is the name of the cache followed by redis.caches.windows.net so this is the host name of redis cache let me note it right and i will pick up another command and make sure that the port is 6380 which is the default redis ssl port right and you see here this is the connection string i copy it i paste it and you see that it has the port number all right now we'll add the connection string to the app i again go to my cloud shell i hope you see it now and i will do code i'm under the redis data i will do this code dot I open up this. I'm going to select the program.cs file. You see here now. So I'm going to create a field in the program class and paste it in the connection string as the value. Static string, right? So I will do here. static string I will do redis connection string and it will be my connection string which is this There you go. All right. Save the editor. And I will do this also as well using service stack dot redis. this I will do save again and and if you want to test it you can close the editor you can again do .NET run it failed and now if you let's say it would have been run so if you want to see and you go here the overview and you see the console here of the Azure cache for redis and now you can type in few commands here to get the value right so get say my key one and if the data would have been present in the azure cache for redis from your app then it would have given you the output right and 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 So this is the, so this is not able to pull up the data, but we use it by following this method by adding it to the file here and doing it correctly. Let me check the file one more time. Right. So this is how you add the values here let me change the contents of the main method 
right so the method here is old. let me change this thing i have updated the main method save and let me close the editor let me to dot net run again it fixes with the error right so maybe i've done something wrong with the creating the method but you got the idea how you can use the azure cache for redis with your uh, apps by making the changes and how you you can use that with integrating the primary key with the port number which is the default for the Azure Cache for Redis. I hope this was informative for all of you guys. If you have any queries, please mention them in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Have a good day.